podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. What if you could be a better player for the cost of one more cup of coffee a month? Get access to a growing library of lit erotica, behind the scenes action, and player's guides with tips on drinking, cooking, fitness, dating, sex, and life after dark. Low tier rate while offer lasts. Patreon.com, game on with Jack. Keep it sexy and game on. This is Trinesia, and you're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. Welcome, good people, sexy people, to Game On with Jackson Stewart. Tonight, we are having a real talk about communication as it applies to dating and also as it applies to business. First up, definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to remind you guys to make sure that you check out Game On with Jack.aweb.com. That way you can jump over and get uh, your subscription of 15 Confidence Commandments. You can build up your confidence. Remember, confidence is key. It's one of the sexiest qualities that uh, women find in men, so definitely do that. Also, stop by patreon.com slash gameoutwithjack. You can start your subscription today and get access to uh, numerous players' guides on everything from conversation to drinking, even to our after dark special, which some of the you know some of the more mature information. And as always, make sure that you catch us on YouTube and catch the show right here every Friday on GameOnWithJack.com. <clears throat> so, in talking about communication, let's just jump right into it. You know. Talking is one of those things that people think just comes naturally just because you can open your mouth and make sounds. It doesn't mean that you are communicating. You know, talking and communicating is as different as hearing and listening. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. If you can master the art of communication and and master is kind of a kind of a tricky used word to use because nobody ever really masters being a communicator. You get really good at it, but you're always able to level up, right? You're always able to go that next step and and just become better at it. And, you know, that's what the show is about. All the shows are about leveling up, but today we're definitely going to give you some pointers on leveling up. But the ability to communicate can make a difference in your dating life, make a difference in, you know, meeting and and picking up or seducing quote unquote women um, and nailing that interview, getting, uh, you know, getting a a better position in the workplace or in a community group, whatever it is, if you can communicate, you'd be surprised how that puts you in a very, very small club. You know, not everybody can talk, not everybody can communicate. So you're looking at, you know, you're in like the 1% of the group. So Let's kick off with some very, they might sound simple, they might sound basic, but they are key steps, key things you want to really hone in on to boost up your level of communication. First up, eye contact. I don't care if you get nervous <laughs> looking people in the eyes, you got to do it. Um, when you look somebody in the eye, you you make a connection and it's, it's something, you know, you can call it primal, you can call it cosmic, you can call it energy, but there's something about eye contact that establishes a level of rapport. And um, according to the communications analytics company, Quantified Impressions, uh, in 2013, they did a study and adults make eye contact between 30% and 60% of the time in an average conversation. I would argue that most people fall in the 30%, maybe about 45. Um, we get nervous looking each other in the eye. Let me tell you something. I am 
amazing at eye contact, but it's still something that makes me, I wouldn't say nervous, but I do detect a, a change in my energy when I am making eye contact. Why is that? Well, one is, you know, I believe that the eyes are the window to the soul. You are kind of bearing yourself to someone when you're making eye contact. Um, it, it's hard to hide intent when you're making eye contact. So if you're at a, a bar, a party, an event, and you're talking to someone that you're sexually interested in or attracted to, they probably will see it in your eyes. So, there's, you know, that's going to be kind of more raw and out in the open if you are not paying attention to someone and you're you know just like killing time it'll come through in your eye contact so that's one reason why people don't make eye contact is because there's a certain level of honesty that um you know there's no bullshit in eye contact and i think a lot of people can be a little scared of that looking someone in the eyes establishes a connection and that's what you want right you know you want that rapport but too little eye contact, you look nervous, uh, you look guilty. You know, if somebody's constantly like flitting their eyes to everything around me, I'm going to instinctively think that they are, you know, guilty of something or, you know, nervous to be around me. And whatever the situation, it's not a good energy that I'm going to want to be around. Second, too much eye contact. And there is such a thing. <laughs> you know, you kind of look a little predatory. You look a little like, you know, you're just staring them down. It's an art form and you keep working at it and you will get better at it. Nobody masters eye contact, but you get really good at it. I don't believe in looking at the forehead. I say, screw that. Look somebody dead in the eye. When somebody looks me dead in the eye, I, you know, they, they get points with me, you know, that I'm going to, I'm going to see them and talk to them and, and, and vie with them at a different level because they are like standing. It's like somebody standing up straight talking to you, shoulder square, dead on, facing you and paying attention. That person has just separated themselves from everybody else at, at that event or in the room. Next up, handshake. And these are in, in no particular order. It kind of, you know, you can, depending on the conversation and how it happens, you might use one of these in front of the other. A handshake. Make it firm. Doesn't matter if it's male or female. Don't shake a woman's hand like she's the queen of England. Shake her hand like you would shake anybody else's hand. The key is to match their force, their pressure. Don't try and win the hand squeezing contest. <laughs> You're not 12, and that's dumb. Match their force. Do not give a limp handshake. If they have no force behind their handshake, just squeeze their hand enough that, you know, if they were to suddenly fall back, you could catch them, but don't crush their hand, but don't, you know, they should know that you're holding their hand. Extend your hand when you're about two to three feet away from somebody, somebody like you're walking towards them. Uh, don't put your arm out while you're all the way across the room. That looks very strange. Shake from the elbow and, and main, maintain eye contact while you're clasping hands. That really says in this moment, I'm about you. I'm about meeting you. I'm about talking to you. I'm about this social engagement right here, right now. That speaks volumes because a lot of people don't do that shit. Um, there's weak handshakes out there. There's people that don't make eye contact. This makes you memorable, especially if you're trying to talk to this person romantically. This, this kind of puts you, uh, above the pack. Um, do not try, <laughs> do not try and do, the soul brother handshake, you, you know what it is. It's, you know, going in and doing all the hand motions and the gestures and the extra. Don't do that unless you know this person well and it's an informal setting. Now, I've been to some meetings where I know a cat. We know each other pretty good. He walks up. He's like, hey, Jack, what's good? I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? And maybe it's a formal meeting. But in that moment, we take a breath and we greet each other with a soul brother handshake, regardless of if he's black, white, Hispanic, Asian. We know each other like that. And in that moment, we, we do that. But when you first meet people, shake their hand like normal. Um, no high fives, no fist bumps. This is not a sporting event. Don't do that. Listening is uh, my next point. And, and I know you're going to sound like, well, Jack, if they're talking to me, right, and, and I can hear them, I'm listening. No, you're not. 
No, you're not. One of the best tips in learning how to talk to others is learning how to listen. Remember that hearing is the physical ability to perceive sounds, to receive sound. That's not listening. Um, that's just your body, your ears work. Congratulations. Listening is when you take in that, you know, that energy that is sound waves and you perceive it, you analyze it, you interpret it, you understand it, you break it down. That is hearing. That is listening. You know, hearing is you hear a loud noise and you jump. Listening is somebody tells you how their day is and you can, you know, listen to the details. You can repeat them back, repeat the details back to them. You are putting in some empathy. So if it was a rough day, you are putting yourself in their situation, in their shoes. If it's a good day, you're feeling the joy they feel. And that is honest to God listening. Uh, what listening is not is waiting for your turn to talk. That's called waiting for your turn to talk. So don't, don't do that. Don't sit there and pause and wait and then just jump in with your points. Listen to people. You know, there's, you'll see it anywhere on the internet, but there's a great quote that says like everybody's going through something. Um, their own personal war, their own, own personal concerns. So if you listen to people, you really can, I believe, save somebody's life. You can make a difference to somebody because in that moment, you may be the only person that they feel is listening to them. And, and that's important. And that is, you know, something that I feel is an outreach to people and, and works on that connectedness, right? That, that level that brings people together. And if you're applying this to a romantic situation, women love men who really listen. You can listen too much. You can definitely listen not enough. It's an art and conversation is an art. Communication is an art. Nobody masters it, but people get really good at it. Uh, physical contact. This one is tricky because, you know, touching people can make a huge difference on the positive, and it can definitely make a huge difference in the negative. Um, any physical contact, unless you really know the person well, should be above the waist and even above the shoulders, you know, unless you really know somebody. So if it's a social event, and, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I got the next round or somebody's going to get you a drink. You know, if you want to give them like a like a tap on the shoulder, like, oh, man, I appreciate it. Or, you know, if it's female or, or somebody you're interested in, male you're interested in, you put a hand on the shoulder like, hey, cool, I'll be right back. Make it short. Make it very innocent. But do not touch. um do not touch like the the small of a woman's back unless you're there with her. Like if you guys are cool like that, maybe you are, you've already been intimate. You guys have that kind of like flirty sexual connection. But if you're talking to a woman for the first time, don't put your hands on the small of her back. That is not good. Even if you're at a, uh, you know, you're out dancing with her and it's kind of a dance where you hold each other. Do not put your hand on the small of her back. That's a very, very, very intimate spot for women. Um, and if you're not wanted, you touching her there is going to freak her out, and rightfully so. If you doubt that, have one of your buddies touch the small of your back. It's weird because you don't have that connection with them. So physical contact, definitely be careful with it. Um, you know, if it's an informal setting, you're saying, hi, you know, you're meeting somebody or, you know, you've met them once or twice, you can do the fist bump. But if, when in doubt, shake somebody's hand like a normal person. This is not a sporting event. I will tell you this about physical contact. The elbow is the master's move. I knew somebody once, and whenever they wanted you to do something, they would shake your hand, and they'd hold it, and then they'd hold your elbow of the same arm, and they'd pull into you. And it fucking worked every time. <laughs> and I don't know why. Well, they were very good at at talking to you on a, a, a heartfelt level. But when they did that elbow, it was like they just took off all your defenses. They they just made you very – it was just a very, like, primal one-on-one -on -one connection. You, you got to work with the elbow a little bit. You can't just pull that off from Jump Street. You got to kind of master that one. But the elbow is, is important. Uh, body language matters greatly. When you're communicating with somebody, how you stand, how you sit says volumes 
about how you are and how comfortable you are in the situation. Avoid folded arms. Avoid the Superman stance, you know, hands on your hip like you're saving Metropolis, uh, unless you're using it for a confidence boost. So, you know, that's one of those things. If you're about to give a presentation or going to an event and you're going to be on the spotlight or not on the spotlight and you're nervous, stand in a room by yourself, put your hands on your hips for like two minutes, and it, it naturally boosts your confidence. It's just that pose is very, very invigorating. But if you're at an event and you're trying to talk to somebody, don't stand like that. Um, don't manscape, don't spread yourself out all over a seating area. You know, if your legs are all wide open and you're all like leaned back and arms are wide out, sit up straight, square your shoulders. Um, you know, don't, don't lean back like you own the place. Don't jut your crotch forward because that's a very sexual position and you might not be there with that person or people in the event could perceive you to kind of be, you know, kind of a cocky ass sitting like that. Sit up straight, you know, legs at the at, at L, pointed down towards the ground, arms, uh, you know, elbows off the table, maybe arms on the arm of the chair. Just relax in your position. Whatever position you pick, even if it's not your natural one, just relax in it. But learn how to sit up straight. Learn how to sit up with good posture. Fellas, it's okay to smile as at, as body language. Now, too much smile, and you look like a serial killer or a madman. Not enough, you look like a robot. A grin is cool. You know, smile with your eyes. And if you have trouble with this, think of a happy thought. Think of something that puts puts you in a good place, you know, in a memory. And then let your face naturally follow. It's hard to look all hard-ass if you're having a good memory in your head. So give that a shot. And I have it on very good um very good account that when a man smiles, he is naturally more handsome. So smile. Don't show all your teeth. <laughs> we don't, it's not a dental exam. But, you know, put a little uh, pull a grin on your face, a little smirk. And like I said, think of a good thought and just let that kind of resonate across your lips. Uh, be brief when you're having a conversation, when you're communicating. Um you know, there is something that is very important in being able to get to the point. If you're attracted, I'm sorry, um, if it's a business conversation, get to the point. You know, pleasantries up front, always high, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. If you know something about the person that they're going through, be polite. Legitimately ask them about the event and listen. So if you know somebody is... You know, you got a business social, but you know, so-and-so's wife is expecting or, or their kid is going, graduating. Mention that. Fucking legitimately listen. Give a damn. Care about somebody besides yourself, guys. And then you can get right to the point of whatever. So here's an example. Um, hey, you know, uh, good morning, Jenny. How you doing? Hey, I heard that, uh, Alfonso was going to graduate. Is it this month? Yeah, he graduated. Well, that's cool. Congratulations to uh, to him and to you guys. You know, he's doing good, and you know, he, kids do good because they got good folks, and that's cool. And then you know, Jenny says something back, and it's like that's cool, cool. Hey, real quick, I don't want to keep you, but I gotta ask you about that report that we gotta work on. Can we get together next week? Blah blah blah. Cool. All right. Hey, I appreciate you. I'll be around most of the day if you want to get together and stuff, but. I'll be around, you know, it's a luncheon or something. I'll check back in on you later. Very simple. She knows I, I need to ask her that question, but she knows I was not a dick about it. And I do actually care. And I made, I don't like the term small talk, but I made conversation wrapped around, uh, you know, what ultimately really had to ask her. So definitely, definitely, definitely be brief, but specific. Um, don't talk to people as if they're machines who exist for you and for you alone. You know, like, hey, I got this problem. You need to solve it. No, no, no. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. How you doing? Uh, what's going on? Talk to people. And, you know, this goes back to any of the other episodes where I talk about connecting with waiter, uh, I'm sorry, waitresses, waiters, bartenders, etc. If you talk to people like they're people, they will do things for you. And you don't talk to people to get stuff, but 
the side effect of connectedness, of reaching out to people and leveling up your communication skills is life gets easier for you because these people will now help you. They will care about you because most people treat them like assholes, but not you. You're better than that. Lastly, um, I'm sorry. Remember, gratitude is magic. When you're talking to people in any scenario, any setting, remember always, please and thank you. You know, even if it doesn't go your way. I've been to countless dances or I have asked out more than my fair share of women who have said no thank you. And, you know, I know some rookie guys who make a big stink about it. They're all pissed off about the woman. They're like, oh, she sucks or she never wanted to dance with me anyway. Nope. I say, okay, that's cool. You know, thanks for your time. You know, have a good night. Pleasant. Because you don't know if this if this woman who you're asking to dance or asking for a drink or asking for a number, she may have had a really fucked up day and she just came out to get out. She's not trying to get picked up by anybody. But because you talked to her and she turned you down and you were cool with it and pleasant with it, she might change her mind. I've had that happen. You know, I've had in the night, Woman I was talking to came over and said, hey, I'm sorry about earlier. I was having a rough day, but I, I, I would like to have a drink with you. Or I, I'd like to go out with you. Or here's my number. So just, you're not a boy, you're a man. And better than a man, you're a player. And you're listening to Game Out with Jackson Stewart. And Jack is telling you to always be polite, always be courteous. That's who you are. You know, you're not this angry little boy out there who just got his feelings hurt. And watch how that gratitude works out for you and that, that pleasantness. Uh, think before you speak, especially if you're attracted or nervous to somebody. For some odd reason, we as people have gotten uncomfortable with silence or with, you know, pauses in the conversation. I want you to take that back. A pause in the conversation is a good thing. Silence is not a bad thing. If you listen to very good speakers, public speakers, they will stop and take a breath. They will collect their thoughts. Do it. You don't have to fill every moment of the conversation with sound. And especially in a a formal or business setting, if you pause and gather your thoughts, now I'm not talking about a six minute or 10 minute pause, just like a couple seconds. Gathering your thoughts shows that you are um, professional, that you are considerate of the gravity of the moment and if it's an informal setting you're meeting somebody you know if they ask you a question and you want to think about it take a moment and think about it you know if they're like oh well you know what brought you here and you can be like well i had a good friend who invited me today and i was thinking about not coming i mean it's fine it doesn't look like you don't know what to say it doesn't look like you're making an answer up it just looks like you are choosing your words rather than just blabbering out some nonsense and bullshit that's going to just make you look stupid. Take your time. Think before you speak. It's okay to pause in this show side. And good people, sexy people, that wraps up our show. Once again, game on with jack.aweb.com, patreon.com slash game on with jack. Follow, uh, follow the show on YouTube. We're trying to get a hundred subscribers so I can change that URL around from just the gobbledygook that it is. And make sure that you subscribe to the Game On with Jackson Stewart email list. You get a free download of 15 Confidence Commandments. And then you, uh, will then be eligible. And we're, I'm going to start sending this out probably later on this week. Updates on Teachable Game. Game on with Jack teachable.com where you can then get a, or game on with Jack dot shop S H O P courses are coming. Webinars are coming. Definitely want something you want to catch out and it's a free enrollment and the first class I offer will be free. So definitely check it out. Appreciate you guys. Take care of yourselves. Keep it sexy.